and good morning. It's Tuesday and it's 10 o'clock and I did try a Google Meet uh, but I don't think people are able to connect so I have to apologize. I just tried with Sandy to to connect and again it didn't work very well so um, this seems to be the best way of communicating is by Facebook Live so if you have Facebook you can join uh, you can make comments you can uh, share by way of text or message and uh, you know it's important for us to try and keep in touch with each other and uh, do what we can to connect I know that things are difficult um, uh, I was intended to be at the church today but um, I still have issues with my back so I thought it was best that I didn't push myself and so instead I wanted to connect in this way. And normally it's the afternoon that I connect but I, uh, I, I connected now by way of uh, this. So, you know, I just listened to um, a message by Jonathan Kahn regarding the induction of the president. Oops, I must be on early. <laughs> um, and I want to share that with you and I will put it, uh, Sandy will share it uh, on the Facebook page and I will share it uh, as best we can with everyone. It is an important message that he brings and it's the truth the reality is what he shares about America it really applies to us here in Canada too and every nation that is turning against God and turning away from God um, we really do need to pray for our leaders and pray that uh, there will be revival and that's what he he, he shared that we have the opportunity to pray for revival. Um, <clears throat> I just listened to it with Sandy and it, it is power. It was shared with us by a friend, uh, Edna Wallhead, who shared it. And uh, it would do well if you can spare the time to just listen to, to the message that he brings. Uh, it's sharing that in the darkness the candle will shine brighter. So God's light will shine brighter as we live for him, as we open our lives up for him, as we continue to maintain uh, respect for each other and as we share love for one another. Um, anyway, I'm... This is on Facebook Live Plus, it is on uh, the Google Meet and uh, I still see that nobody else has joined, so so be it. Um, I know it's difficult, I uh, have now regularly connected with other pastors by way of uh, Zoom and I know many people have problems with getting on Zoom, so uh, that also is uh, not always easy and unless you've done it once or twice. Um, Baptist pastors meet every Tuesday. Uh, I've met with the pastors in uh, Collingwood and also the pastors in Georgian Triangle Ministerial. So uh, that has been helpful for me to know that what others are doing as well and other churches and how they're responding to the difficult situation we find ourselves in where we're not able to meet. I do have to share with you that uh, uh, it's interesting the way that the media works and this social media works that uh, so many people are reached and by way of the website that Paul Dolmage uh, keeps up and I thank him for that. It's uh, an important part of our ministry and uh, we continue to get responses from the web page. I had a response from the web page last week. Uh, I mentioned it on Sunday, but I'll mention it here today. That, uh, and it's a matter for prayer, that a young lady 
who has recently given birth to a baby, uh, wanted to know if when we open up uh, we would hold a service for her child and uh, I have to get back to her later on today. She tells me that she attended the church when she was in school and uh, so I will have a conversation with her later on today. Um, <clears throat> as this is, was a time of prayer we need to pray for each other, pray for Barbara. I'm not sure how she is. I, have, I haven't called her today but she's not She's been under the weather and uh, needs our prayer, as well as Joyce and uh, Joyce Maxwell. And uh, as we think of all the different individuals who need our prayers, we all need prayer. And uh, it's a privilege to be able to share with each other. Again, I was hoping that I would hear from people and they would share with me what their prayer requests would be and how they're doing. Um, we do communicate with email and I do speak to people on phone and uh, I'm always available. Please don't hesitate to call if you have a need. I know certain people uh, are reluctant to ask for help but sometimes it's necessary and we need to realize and I appreciate those who have offered help. Um, I, Thank you for any offers of help that you've given to us. So uh, thank you. It's a blessing to serve God here in the community. And it's not the way that we expect it to be uh, ministering, but it's the way of today. And uh, I'm sure that we will be able to find ways in which we can make this social media more accept accessible to people. I uh, do need to find the best way for us as a church to communicate. And... Uh, this obviously uh, is not going to work and so I'm going to call off the Google Meet and cancel that out and uh, we will see if anyone else has joined. Nobody else has joined so I will log off there and keep on Facebook Live. So there's much that we can pray for and uh, you know I do want to share this message that Jonathan Kahn shared today because it is so relevant for us and not to be despondent and not to be discouraged but to be encouraged to know that God is in control that uh, he is a holy God and we have to answer uh, for our responses and all that we do and uh, you know it's it's it really is uh, as I say a vital message for us today that we might hear what God has to say to us so let me just share a passage of scripture with you and uh, Here, excuse me, we have the Apostle Paul in his uh, letter to the Colossians. He says this, chapter 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you've already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will, through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may love, live a life 
worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Just a comment on those verses, and that is this, that he has qualified us to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. God's kingdom of light. That's what we are part of, and that's what we bring in this world of darkness. We may face opposition, but the light cannot be put out. Because God is with us, we are sealed by his Spirit. He is our hope. He is the one who gives us the strength day by day to live for him. Remember what Paul says here, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you've already heard in the true message of the gospel. I pray that God will bless that reading of his word to you and uh, let's pause and let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity we have of sharing together. We ask, Lord, that you'll meet with each of us, each member of the First Baptist Church, just where we are, that we might have that assurance of your presence, that we might know that we are connected, that uh, we are part of a, a family that is from all nations and made up of all people who love you, who've put their faith in you and experienced the new life that you give. We thank you for those who speak boldly. Uh, Jonathan Kahn, as he shares the reality of the situation in the United States, and we see the same situation here. Lord, we know that it is a nation that honours you that will be blessed. And we know that as a nation we've turned our backs on you. We are suffering the pandemic, we are suffering in other ways too, because of the way in which many consider good, evil, and evil good. And so, Lord, I pray that you will help us to continue to share your love. Although people may show some antagonism towards us, help us to be kind and loving and merciful and respond. We know that we need to turn back to you. So help. Help us as a church, to flourish. We pray your blessing upon each one. Those who are sick, may they know your healing touch. And again, thank you for this opportunity. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you for joining me today. And uh, we will find ways of communicating. God bless. Bye.